Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about oscillations. Well, first of all, what are oscillations? They're anytime you have an object that is subject to a restoring force and it wants to get back to its equilibrium position. So what do I mean by that? Well, a simple example would be if I have this yo-yo here and I swing it back and forth, gravity is pulling it back towards the center every time it deviates from there's some angle away. And so it's trying to get back to its equilibrium position. And so this is an oscillation or a repetition of the motion due to a restoring force. So if you remember back when we talked about forces and their potential energy functions, Anytime you have a uh, potential energy function that has a valley in it, like this, and this is a potential energy plotted against position, it's going to have a stable equilibrium point here. And the force is always going to point back towards that stable equilibrium point. So if I put the object here, uh, remember that the force is the negative slope of the potential energy function, so it's going to feel a force back this way. Um, towards the stable equilibrium point. Likewise, if I put it here, the slope there is positive, so the force is going to be negative and point again back towards the stable equilibrium point. Uh, a more practical example of this is with molecules. Remember that molecules have a potential energy function that looks like this. So if you imagine a molecule has two atoms and they're connected with some uh, through some force that behaves kind of like a spring and their separation is R here. The potential energy function has this general shape, whereas this is the stable equilibrium point. And so if I pull these molecules apart just a little bit or push them together, they're gonna, it's going to vibrate or oscillate around that equilibrium position right there. Um, and we can use these oscillations to study the properties of the molecules. Now, why are oscillations so incredibly important? They're important because all waves come from oscillations. Okay, let's do some examples and I think you'll see this. First of all, there's the pendulum example and uh, it doesn't really produce any noticeable waves, but you can see it, it oscillates back and forth around an equilibrium position. Uh, think about a, a different example, a tuning fork. If you hit that tuning fork, the tines of the tuning fork are vibrating back and forth uh, against their equilibrium position. Remember that all things behave like springs, and so if you deform this tuning fork, the tines a little bit, they want to go back to their equilibrium position. And in doing that, they produce sound that we can hear. Think about a, a, a guitar string. If you take the guitar string and you pluck it, it's going to vibrate around its equilibrium position, which is just straight up and down, and again, that produces sound that we can hear. A more common example that we explore in our book that gives us some properties that we can easily adjust and think about what the results of that are, are a mass uh, vibrating on a frictionless surface here. And when you, if you pull that mass away from its equilibrium position, it's going to oscillate around the equilibrium position. We can study how, what the properties of the oscillations based on like what happens if we change the spring constant or what happens if we change the mass. And this is illustrative. This is a toy model that tells us about other situations that we actually care about, like molecules or uh, musical instruments. Remember that in this situation with the spring and the mass, it has a potential energy function that looks like this. Again, looks like a valley. And that, that's because that potential energy function is 1 half kx squared. So you'll recall that x squared gives you a parabola, which is a nice valley-shaped uh, equal uh, potential energy function. Now there's a couple of quick uh, vocab words we need to talk about here with waves, or with oscillations, excuse me, that are common to waves too. And that is the idea of the period, uh, which we use the capital letter T to denote. And this is the um, time for one repetition. And this is going to be measured in seconds. Uh, there's also the frequency, which we use the letter F. Sometimes we use the Greek letter nu. This is like a sideways, uh, it's like a falling over V, but it's not a V, it's a nu, and a uh, Greek letter. And that one is frequency, and that's going to be the, well, you can think of this as how often the thing repeats, or how many times it will repeat in one second, or it's going to be measured in cycles per second. Um, but cycles aren't really a unit on their own, and so really this is like 1 over seconds. But a better unit for 1 over seconds is hertz, and you've heard hertz before. Um, 
uh, you, like radio stations will be advertised at 99.7. The 99.7 is 99.7 megahertz or 99.7 million uh, cycles per second that 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 radio waves are oscillating. Human hearing goes from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So, um, yeah. So these are some ideas, some of the basic ideas surrounding oscillations. The main idea being that all waves come from oscillations.